Hi, everybody. We are the Trucking Solutions Group. Um, Bob is going to help moderate and keep us all on track because we are a bunch of truck drivers, owner operators, and we see squirrels everywhere. <laughs> so I, I'm going to give us a past history. Our, our, this group actually formed in 2008. Um, we have been meeting weekly on a conference phone call. Uh, that whole time, we've had a, a few short months of our breaks, but not very often. Um, the original group formed to better each other's business. And it, it has splintered off a few different times through that. We've, we've, people have left our group and formed charity groups, formed health groups, but the core has always been owner operators. And what we want to talk about a little bit is how you can form a group that will help you which in whatever your situation is. So even though we're owner operators, it could be drivers, it could be anything else. But back to our past, how we, we decided to do the group and we decided we needed a name. And that really was our biggest step, which made us an organization was having that name. And that's how we, we took a lot of well, while to come up with the Trucking Solutions Group. And once we got with that one, we actually have a Facebook page and one of our members created a website. Vin Vince, Vince did the website, which is a, really our calling card. So if anybody wants to know about us, we'll send them a link to that. And it just has a little bit about each of us. And that is uh, truckingsolutionsgroup.com. And we use free conferencing call. Is it free conferencing? conferencing free conferencingcall.com. And that's a, it's actually a free service. And we call into that. We have a number that is only for us to talk on. And if we have guest speakers, we have a second number for that. And that is open to anybody to call. And if we want, uh, very many will announce it, that we're having that. Um, we have added members to our group, and we've lost members to our group. Um, if, if somebody leaves the trucking business, then they are no longer in our group. Or they leave to become a driver, they're not in the group anymore. So we've added and taken away. It's kind of a lengthy process to become a member of our group. You will come on a call as a guest, uh, usually on somebody's phone that invited you. And you see if the group fits you, and then we see if you fit in our group. And that can take months at a time. Um, we, it's, when we have our, in, our private calls, um, as Vince calls it, we have witty banter. Um, which you can learn a lot from the witty banner. Um, when we have a formal call, uh, we have a, a little protocol we follow because all of us are A-type personalities and we override each other something terrible. So we have a, when you get in a talk and you have to say over so we don't talk over each other, which has worked out well. Um, we have, what else do we have? What, can you think of anything else I need to add to my, uh, the background, Henry? Henry, Bob and I have been there since 2008. Um, we have a member in the audience that was with us for almost since the very beginning, and then he quit trucking and went into, got a sawmill. And then it's just been various years, but I think the youngest one is Mark at four years. So, Joey, you wanna take over? I'll take over. Thanks, Linda. Um, just to personalize the group, there's 13 individuals in our group. Some, some of them aren't here. There are two teams, nine solos, 283 years of driving experience, 220 years as owner operators. Currently operate in expediting, dry van, open deck, dry bulk, reefer, livestock, and one member does haul boats. Some of our members also have experience with concrete trucks, tandem dump trucks, pneumatic trailers, and power only. Some of the other organizations we belong to are Trucker Buddy, Women in Trucking, Western States Truck Alliance, Team Run Smart, OOIDA, Boy Scouts of America, Sons of the American Legion, Colorado Rock Hoppers, International Harvester Collectors, and there's one member that is in the uh, Aluminum Foil Origami Society. <laughs> we live in eight different states, and when we're not driving our trucks, we're probably out there enjoying 
fishing, hunting, photography, woodworking, camping, motorcycles, off-roading, playing some music. In fact, one person's learned how to play drums. Reading, marksmanship, boating, bicycling, operating steam engines, snowboarding, brewing beer, mountain man reenactment, cross stitch, and hobby farming. And I'll tell you, we don't always agree on every subject, and that's the beauty of the group, is we don't have to agree, but we have a nice debate and come to sometimes a consensus, sometimes we don't just agree, but we can get still get along with each other. And some of the topics that have been real debates are hours of service and how that all worked out. And we'll leave that for questions later. Henry, the future of the group. They asked me to talk about where we're going. Been around since the beginning of it, and to me our name says a lot of it. We're looking for solutions. After the rules are made, it doesn't matter if they're good or bad rules, because they are the rules. I, I have a racing background, and really what we bring to the table is figuring out how to make it work better than our neighbor at that point. You don't have to figure out that rule to make it work perfectly. You just have to be the best in class to succeed at it. So to me, our name says it all, having a group that's diverse, that's not just flatbedders, it's not just reefers, it's expeditors, straight trucks, everything involved. There's some people that are leased on to motor carriers or some of us with our own authority. Operating in all those different fields, to me, the answer is solutions. That's what we're always looking for as a group of how to better our business. Nice job. And Henry, I have the first question for you. So with this group, you're designed to help one another, right? That's the whole purpose. What is a good example of where you have been helped? Because you're an expert in this field. What has happened to you that was so helpful from this group? I'd say Bob helps me a lot on the maintenance side. I know how to run them. Uh, specking and having discussions back and forth of expanding our mind as to, no, I got a better one than that. I never wanted a GPS. I knew where I was going. I had driven for years without a GPS, and I was very adverse to having new technologies like a GPS in my truck because I wasn't going to follow a GPS like a dog on a leash, but, you know, the GPS is handy. You know, adopting technology, getting the most out of it, yeah, that's probably been one of them, getting me to accept technology. Very, very good. Thank you. Uh, Vince, I'm going to throw the same question at you. Out of this group, give an example of how they have helped you succeed in your business. I think that's a very good question. I have to say, um, as owner-operators, we step out into a, a whole new area all by ourselves. The word independent and owner-operator usually goes together. But we need a network and a support team behind us. We cannot do everything ourselves. With this group, um, they get to call me out on all my mistakes, dumb things that I do regularly, and that's what your friendships out there, your network and ability is, once you become an owner-operator, you need to find somebody who's gonna tell you, that's an idiot idea, don't do that. And this group right here is one that will tell you that. And as Joel had said, we agree to disagree. We each have our own different strategies. When the ELD mandate came out, we might not have agreed how to do it, but as Henry had said, with his racing background, you have to adapt and then overcome. So by knowing other people and how they've used their devices in their trucks, how they've used the rules and regulations to their advantage is what you have to do. So to answer that question, how have I personally benefited in that sense, it's every day, all day. Um, they know me as the guy with aluminum foil hat. I will say, one day, if you look at the aluminum foil, there's a shiny side and a dull side. One day, I'm a dull reflection of the people around me. These are subject matter experts. Other days, I'm a shiny uh, example of them, but these are subject matter experts that have done some amazing things out there. If you're looking at people who are um, 
you know, 10 miles per gallon in tractor trailers is phenomenal at 70 plus miles an hour. Go talk to other people and they'll tell you, no, we can't do that. These are the early adopters. These are the people who are out there making progress. These are the people who want to do what they're doing. Not begrudgingly, not, um, I think I need to answer your question. I benefit from everything that they do around me. All right, thank you, Vince. Um, Mark, since you have the microphone, I'll ask you a question next. Uh, somewhat similar. How have you been helped by this group, and how have you helped others in this group? Well, first of all, uh, the group for me has allowed me to adapt to a way of working smarter rather than harder. Um, one great example of that was as Henry said about ELDs. When ELDs were going to come out, I was absolutely against it. After talking to Henry briefly, you know, pointed out some uh, ways to make it efficient and uh, make it work for me. How can I make it work for my business plan? Uh, he also was a major contributor uh, for me specking out my first brand new truck along with Joel. Uh, those two individuals uh, had great input on that and showed how to look outside the box. Don't just l listen to the mainstream and forget about the real information. And uh, I think the other thing was uh, how can I make my business grow? It isn't so much about getting another truck or anything like that. How can I be a better professional for my customers. Uh, I have uh, since gained a dedicated customer that I haul for, and I have a relationship not only with the manufacturer, but I have a relationship with several of the customers I go to, the dealers. And when I go to those different uh, dealers, they greet me by name. I greet them by name. We know how the process works, going from the pickup, in the trans transit, and at delivery. Um, what do I do with others that I come across? I try to share the same information that I've learned from these individuals. Um, really about it at this point. And hand the, hand the microphone to Shane. And Shane, um, you're an expert with hauling oversized boats, correct? Okay. And you've been doing this for how long? Uh, five years. Do you ever mentor anybody who wants to get into a specific niche like that? Uh, so when we bring on new uh, owner operators, I, I help them load, uh, show them how to load, and, and then to teach them on the oversized permits and routing and, and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, has, has this group helped you with that process? Uh, yeah, uh, being more outgoing and, and helping people. And, uh, okay. And hand the microphone over to uh, Randy. And Randy, um, you, spe you, you specialize in what? I specialize in bulk commodities, walk-in floor. And have you ever, do you ever mentor new people coming into the industry? Yes, all the time we do, I do. <clears throat> My dad has uh, a broken business and a trucking company, so when new guys come on, if they need to know the ins and outs of it, I'm usually helping. Winter time is always the hardest, and I don't like when they come in in winter time because some of the stuff we haul, we have to do extra steps to prep our floors so that they do move in the winter time. This winter, I'll give you an example. I got caught with a load on the trailer. It was rainy. It was warm back east, and I was going west. Rain went up and underneath the floor, and one night in Michigan, it decided to freeze, obviously, and the load did not come off. I went to truck garage, put it inside for 15 minutes, and the load moved. So you have to be thinking ahead with what we do so that stuff like this doesn't happen. And um, Henry, to you, but I think Mark had said earlier about, he mentioned customer service. Have you guys ever had a, a call about customer service and, and discuss that? Yeah, we've had that all the time, but I want to bring up something with Randy, and this is like with working together. You don't associate a live bottom bulk commodity hauler with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. Yet here we got Randy, 
and through talking to me in a dry van where I have all the aerodynamics you can add on to it, we had a conversation where he has a fuel efficient bow collar. I mean, you went as far as having a trailer tail on a bow, bow collar. It's probably about the only one that there's ever been. But it's that kind of thing that it, having a group of diverse backgrounds, it makes it that we don't end up having the horse blinders on, that we can see other operations and get an idea that you talk to other people with the other types of open deck with your boats, all of it figuring better ways to do our business, even though we're in different fields. It, it, it helps not having blinders on that you're just tanker or you're just reefer. And, and that's a prime example of it. And what did you ask me before that? And I went down that rabbit uh, hole? Customer service. So customer that's, service, that's a, hot, that's a hot topic. I mean, so we, have you guys covered it as an issue on one of your calls? Well, sure, yeah. And, and image and everything else that we do around that. It's, and it's huge of what a difference it makes with your customers and how, in the case of like myself on my own authority, how do you get your own customers? How, how do you operate without using brokers? I mean, no offense, Bob. Yes, Linda? Henry, one of the things that you've taught all of us was how you present yourself. And how many of us <laughs> have you got to wearing a uniform and really thinking deeply about how you present yourself to a customer? Well, and especially in this industry, the one thing that I really concentrate on, we are full of first impressions. Yes, I wear a tie every day to work. I started doing that when I was flat betting. It's great with a customer, the ROI on it's been better than anything I've ever, ever done aerodynamically or otherwise. But one of the other things aside for it, you know, there's different times, ATA, OIDA, all the associations do different things trying to promote our image, right? What I really like about wearing the tie to work, oftentimes when I'm at a smaller truck stop where it's just two fuel islands and you walk around the front, you're getting a cup of coffee, I can't tell you how many times I have somebody in a car say to me, you're a truck driver? It starts a conversation that would have never happened before. Next thing, I have them over at the truck. I'm letting them sit in a the seat. They're seeing where blind spots are. We're talking about how long it takes to stop the truck, and it just goes on and on. Same way with the customers. By being above what they call, what I'd call the bar of being just in a regular uniform, which to me should be the bar to start with, it starts conversations with customers that never would have happened. I can count on it when I walk in, and Bob has some stories that way as well, where you can get, almost be guaranteed the person that owns the place, runs the place, or somebody that's in charge of something always comes and has a conversation with you, which often leads into other business. And when it's their customer wanting them to use you, it gives you the upper hand on the rates as well. But I cherish all forms of that, of what it does when I have the chance to talk to the motoring public in a positive way about what we do. And with that, people are going to remember you because of the tie, because you are different from your average truck driver. So Today I am. I have a picture that I always share with everybody. It's old school. I yep. based my uniform on the 1940s through 50s truck driver. Anybody wants to see it afterwards, I keep the picture right on my phone. Because I have a lot of people tell me, I'm too old school for that. Well, they're stuck on the movie Convoy, which, by the way, was not a National Geographic documentary, everyone. Convoy has done this industry more harm than any movie ever made. Hey, let, let's open it up I for like a question. I like the movie, though, but it just wasn't good for the industry. Uh, we'll, we'll open it up for a question. Anybody have a question at this time? We, right here? Uh, he's going to bring a microphone to you in a second. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you. So other than being somebody for me to speak with, what's in it for me to become part of this group or have a part of a group? So the question was, what is, it, what is in it for me to be a part of this group? Um, Linda? As an owner operator. So, oh yeah. I keep forgetting it's on. So I, to become a part of this group, you're going to have to come in as a guest as one of us and then see if you fit in. But our whole goal is actually to have you guys consider starting your own group of, of either drivers. It could be anything. You can start your own group to better your business in whatever your situation is. But the whole the secret, to I believe, to our group is that it's so diversified. But yet we have the core of owner-operators, where you can have a core of, you know, of, of just drivers, 
or a, a core of expediters would actually work as long as you do the different divisions. So the, the reason you would want to do it is it's, it's actually not only bettered our business, it's, in a lot of ways it's bettered our lives because these guys are all a lot of fun. They're all a little bit crazy. Um, we get along really well, usually. Um, <laughs> Can I add to that? Sure. Time and money. That's what we're all here for, right? Time and money. Um, and if you can hear my voice right now, you should listen to this. You can gain time and money because you can ask the people around you how you can better your business, how you can grow what you're doing, how you can make more money and work smarter and not harder. Because, well, you can see my blue collar merit badge right there. I've bumped my finger on many things. Bob has taught me how to uh, do simple things like change wheel seals on a truck. All the people here um, have made mistakes or have improved their business. So as you're sitting in the audience, you need people around you to help you. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to uh, lose weight or stop smoking. If you have somebody that's an accountability partner, that just raised the bar for you, right? So I will say, if you say out loud, I want more time and I want more money, and you say that to the world around you, I want a better life, they're gonna hold you to it. One thing I'll add to that, make sure you're, the group you form doesn't always agree. Because if they always agree with you, it becomes an echo chamber and nobody will improve. You have to have disagreement. But don't have knock down, drag out fights. That's the key. And you've, you've been online for the la during the pandemic, but from the very beginning or no? On your meetings are online? Conference calls, essentially. Okay, do you ever meet together outside of today? Rarely. Okay, rarely, rarely. okay. Yeah. All right, and you have guest speakers, though, all the time, right? Yep, and some of them you saw up there. Um, Sandy, question for you. Do you have a favorite guest speaker or a fa and a favorite topic during one of these meetings? Uh, my best guest speaker is I learned about how certain, certain chain of uh, truck stops, how in the winter time, they will check at that truck stop there and 250 miles around, they'll check what the temperature is and then they'll base, they'll tell the truck stop, well, we suggest that you put this much additives in your fuel so your fuel doesn't fuse. I never realized, I thought it was a, you know, each, each station did their own thing, even in a chain. And I also learned that depending upon how cold you are, the further north you are, that's where you want to buy your fuel when it's cold. You don't want to fill your truck up in the south and then drive all the way up into Minnesota where it's 30 or 40 below. You want to just fill up enough to get you halfway or three quarters of the way up and then fill in for your fuel. But that was my uh, best learning moment there of guest speakers. And Henry wants to add to this? Yeah, adding to that with speakers we've had, and, and we've had some really cool speakers. I mean, with getting to do things professionally, we've had FMCSA administrators on our call. What, what a unique time to have their ear and to understand somewhat what they're going through. What a thankless job. The, the best answer I got out of any of them was they know when they did the rules perfect is when the safety groups are irritated, the drivers are irritated, and all the trucking companies are irritated. They hit it right down the middle. Everybody's mad. What a job to have to make everybody mad, right? But that being said, I remember the one time, and you read about all the stuff about Pat and Crash and all these safety advocacy groups, right? And you'd think that we're evilly against each other. Well, the one day I got tired of the only time I read about them was in the trucking media. So I reached out and t talked to them. They ended up being on one of our calls, and to me that was one of the coolest calls. They weren't doing their lobbying, because what you read about them in the papers, their lobbying efforts, just like our lobbying efforts to them sound ridiculous. And when we sat down and talked, we found out we're only this far apart. That was one of the coolest calls. You remember that, and it was quite contentious when we were putting it together. It's like we're gonna have Pat and Crash on a call. 
you know, that, that was like oil and vinegar, but it was great. And to me, that's the kind of things of breaking down some of those walls, not only with the public, but with the government, with state officials, parking, planning people, and amongst ourselves, you always find an answer. And you did it amongst a small group. Linda, did you have a question? Well, I was thinking, you know, one of the things that happened when the hours of service were changing, I don't remember, when was the huge hours of service change? But they were doing all those listening sessions. And we were, we were in on the listening sessions. We wrote letters. I mean, we complained bitterly that they were going to ruin our lives. Oh, is that when? Three? It was one of those years that Gina's trying to tell me. 2003. So we, we did. We complained bitterly. You know, they were going to ruin our business. It was just god awful. So, but what we did, and we, we did, we, we wrote letters. We didn't want the half hour break. I mean, uh, we didn't want to nap in the afternoon. But then what happened is when it passed, that's when we really went to work because then we were going to make the most of the changes. And all of us helping each other got us through that very easily. We made money. But the, the one that is cra crazy, they always call it the caffeine break, is because I really like the half-hour break. And I'm probably one of the few people like But what I figured out as a team is that we weren't, when we would stop, we would run in, do our thing, get back in the truck, and take off. I didn't realize how bad it was till the half-hour break come around and how long a half-hour is. But that's one way we all help each other is how to write a better letter, how to complain bitterly that they're going to ruin your lives, and then how to succeed once it passes. And we are very good at that. I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hey, do we have any other questions in the audience right now? Anybody have a question? Feel free, please. All right. I heard my name behind me. Hey, I have a question for all of you. You're here at Matt's. What are you going to take away from it? That's what, what is in it for you? What are you going to take away? So as we're here at Matt's, we're walking around all the vendors, and we're making contacts, and we're networking, and we cannot do that individually as well as we can together. Not one of us is better than all of us. That's why the peer group is there. It's a torque multiplier, not one that you want to hit your finger on, but it's a torque multiplier. So what you can do when you have more than one person is bring more to the group. So after the show, we're going to ask Henry what he saw. Henry, what did you see at the truck show? Vince. Oh, Vince. No. <laughs> but as you are here, though, think about that. What are you going to take away? How are you going to better develop your business? One way is simple. Simple return on investment is interacting with the world around you. Uh, Vince, back to you, actually. Um, so Mance is a resource for owner-operators. What other resources are available that an owner-operator should be taking advantage of outside uh, of Mance? That is a great question. So other peer groups would be a wonderful thing. Like you see the red shirts, women in trucking, um, trucker buddy, anything that can help develop your business. There's, there's so many associations out there. Um, and they're there so you win. They're there so you can do better. Um, many, many in that sense. All right. Anyone else have a favorite group they're a part of outside of Trucking Solutions that they would recommend? Well, there's always good to be involved in associations that represent. Uh, you got, especially if you're an owner-operator, you got NASTIC, you got OIDA. Uh, pay attention to the other ones, too. I mean, you, you get so many people because they're a member of one association. If, if another association's for it, they got to be against it. You know, every, everybody gets a good idea once in a while, you know. What, so don't blind yourself by it. Be broad with it. I belong to a California Trucking Association. Well, it's Western Trucking Alliance now. But it's mainly California stuff. I don't even go to California, but a lot of rules start from there. So being a member of that keeps me abreast of what might be coming my way farther east of them. So, you know, broaden things up. Go ahead. Um, one organization that I belong to back home uh, that keeps me highly busy when I'm not doing trucking is Sons of the American Legion. Uh, some of you may ask, well, what is the Sons of the American Legion? Well, you got your Legion members, uh, which is made up of uh, veteran military personnel that's went 
served the military, whether it's two years, four years, or made a career out of it. And uh, one night I had a fellow commander from another uh, post uh, squadron come to our meeting one night, talked about a few things that were going on, not only at uh, local level, county level, district level, state level, federal level. But one of the questions that was asked was kind of what caused the, Sun the American Legion come about? The answer was no veteran shall go alone. With that being said, I can proudly sit up here and say, pretty proud to be part of an honor guard when there's a service member that passes. And probably one of the best experiences I had, we had, best I can remember, about six years ago, we had a fellow member that was killed in uh, Pearl Harbor. They found these remains, identified them. We had a special ceremony. I had friends that were part of a Legion Riders group, Patriot Guard, Honor Guard, so forth, went up to Minneapolis, helped escort that individual's body back to our hometown. And we had a full funeral service for the individual. The Navy came in, uh, did their part, and it was just such a huge honor to be part of that, to know that his family was finally met with closure. Something that happened many years ago, we finally give his family what they deserved. Thank you. Um, all of you, I think, have mentioned the importance of bringing to the group different perspectives. Has there been an issue or two, and this is open to everybody, has there been an issue or two that was particularly challenging to the group, and what was the final outcome of that? And it's open to anybody. <laughs> Linda? We could ask, I gotta say, there's been a lot of arm wrestling. There's plen plenty of arm wrestling over all kinds of things. So you open up the, the can of politics or uh, hours of service, regulations. Uh, you can just start, yeah, anything that you want to, uh, um, anything that you really want to um, talk to a stranger about and uh, get them upset about, it's the same in the group, but we agree to disagree in that sense. So we walk away with knowing at least what the other person's perspective is. So. Um, I will have to say, in that sense, most people, when they walk up to me, they look and they ask, is that your natural hair color? I say yes. Um, the black eye was given to me by God, and it's because I probably tried to disagree with him also when I was younger. Um, it's okay to disagree, though, I have to say. And if it makes you upset, if it gets you emotional, it's a good thing to talk about. And by the way, we add light to the to the group. <laughs> Henry, did you want to add I something? I mean, right now, we got one that's a continuing debate up and down, and that's been on the Fair Labor Sta Standards Act and how that interacts with trucking. I mean, that's been a debate we've been having back and forth and taking positives from both sides of it, but that's ongoing at the moment. But nobody ever starts calling each other names or stupid or this or that. It's an interchange of ideas. It's not about I'm better than you or you're better than me or my idea is better than you. And maybe mine changes listening to you. Well, something else that's really been able that's hit all of us is the last two years of going through COVID. Our lives have all been turned upside down. Our, our businesses have had to change our, the way we do everything every day. And, and that was where we don't all agree totally on how to react to COVID, but we're all here supporting each other how to get through COVID. And I think that has been a huge benefit of, of what, what one of us has learned and shares with the group to help, help the other one. So that, that's been huge to get through this one. On the simple positive things though, when you have a whole group through all of us going to a show, like say I might make a contact with one of the oil companies. Well, when they know they're talking to one, more than one person, I'm liable to have one of their engineers come on one of our conference calls. We'll know more about oil than we ever dreamed of knowing before. But, you know, through that, knowledge is power to help us run everything better. If I just wanted them to sit down and talk with me for an hour, it's probably not going to happen. But when they know that they're getting in on a group that's larger and other people inviting guests that they might be talking to 30, 40 people, they take the time. And to me, that's just awesome, knowing more about getting the most out of what we're purchasing. And I keep wanting to say over like we do on our... 
All right, we have, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, so on our conference calls, we talk like we're on, uh, on an airplane or on a CB, and that's, I have the same thing. As we're done talking, because you're on a conference call and you can't see each other, we all say over. That way you know the next person can talk, so there's etiquette to what we're doing. So that way we can agree with, our, or disagree with each other very politely. And a question. Oh, a question, yes. What's the teamsrunsmart.com? That's a Freightliner program. I'm part of it. Bob and Linda used to be part of it. Um, back in, and Jimmy Navarez is also part of it. Back in 2007, when they came out with the Cascadia, they wanted three owner operators to run them, give them feedback, blog about it, and talk to others about it. Since then, it's become not only a feedback from us, but other people we meet on the road back to engineering to constantly be improving upon it. We have another question. All right, um, I understand, and this is not for Henry, but I understand that Henry is big on parking lot etiquette. Is that right? No? Oh. Yes, yeah, sort of. But, but it's not for you, though. So have you ever had this as a topic on one of your calls? Sandy. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of uh, discussions about the the 30 minute break, doing it in the fuel island. Where, where are you fueling? Please pull forward so that the people behind you trying to get fuel can get fuel. And if you're done with that, and you notice that someone else behind you needs to leave, there is creep mode, you can crawl, you don't have to romp on the accelerator to get out of, you know, to make it down the road. You can crawl to get out of the person's way so that they can continue on with their day because all they're doing is stopping for fuel. That's one big example. By the same token, I, I said not for we've had this debate about taking the break on the fuel island. I'll admit it, there's times I take my break on the fuel island on purpose but it's usually at 11 o'clock at night and there's one open spot. I don't want to take that for somebody that's taking 10 hours. But now when I do that, I stay with the truck. If I see I'm blocking anybody, I move. But I'm doing it to save a spot for somebody that needs it for 10 hours. It's actually less convenient for me because I have to stay with the truck. Over. R R Randy, how would you, what would you add to this uh, parking lot etiquette discussion? I would have to agree with Henry 100%. I mean, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Henry. <laughs> over, over. <laughs> I'm finished, over. No, but in, in all seriousness, I mean, if you're coming in for fuel, need a 30-minute break, take it at, you know, in the fuel aisle. Parking lot, at a, yeah, drive slow, respect other people. There's... There's this thing out there, even now, even in parking lots and on the road, respect has been lost, and we need to get that back, even even into this building here. You know, respect people going through doorways. So just remember what's around you and respect other people. Over. Shane, what about you? For me, hauling oversize, uh, I try to respect other drivers in the parking lot by uh, parking uh, out of the way so I don't take up so many parking spots. Uh, if I'm not that wide, I try to take up one parking spot. I can't tell you how many times I see an oversize. It's like you didn't need two parking spots and you're wasting space. I try to park off the side where I can park over a line where there's not a parking spot next to me. Stuff like that and, of course, the whole fuel island thing. Don't, I don't even want to get started on that. Very good. Want to add to it, Mark? Um, I would agree exactly with what Henry said and uh, uh, Shane. Um, I don't do oversized right now, but I have in the past. And it's really frustrating when you see those individuals taking up way more space than they need. But I think the real key issue as well is, as they've also said, you know, think about what's going on around you. You will be as good as that you surround yourself with, whether it be parking, your friends, your business, whatever it is. If you want to be more successful, surround yourself with better than yourself. But back to the parking, don't be afraid to ask a question. If you see someone struggling to get back into a spot, 
don't hesitate to put your four ways on, set the brake, get out and help somebody. Because guess what? We all started the same way as everybody else out here. We all had that first day we got in the truck, looked everything over, did that first load. We've all been there. So don't ever be too proud to help somebody else out. And that goes along with the education. If somebody's asking a question, don't be afraid to ask. For instance, I do open deck freight. Uh, somebody asked me, you think your load looks all right? Yeah, and I asked them the same question back in return. If you don't like it how it looks, throw an extra train, throw an extra strap. Same goes with parking. Help others. Don't be afraid to ask. Sure, go. I have to say, so as a peer group, you just heard multiple answers there, and it's one of those things that if you ask a simple question, you might get a different perspective from the guy who owls oversized, the guy who owls bulk commodities. They have a different viewpoint from a guy who's pulled livestock or a reefer. My trailer might drip. Sometimes it's only ice. Sometimes it's other things, and I fertilize the yard around me. But... Um, uh, there's a reason why we do certain things, and unless you ask them, you won't know why. And that's the important thing. My biggest pet peeves on parking lot etiquette is if you're too big to take your trash to a trash bag or a barrel, you're probably too small to do the job right. And at shippers and receivers, I always walk with my head down. I'm looking for that nail or that bolt that's going to save either my tire or your tire. <laughs> so, so mine is going to be different than all theirs, of course. So I get frustrated with the slow roll or the one that looks like the Indy car race and they just drop the green flag. And it's, there just doesn't seem to be an in-between anymore. And it's like getting behind somebody doing a slow roll is... Ugh. And then walking out in front of anybody that's not a race. The other thing that I think all of us would agree on is the person that sits in their truck and videos somebody else getting ready to have a wreck. And boy, none of us. That, that is just, that is wrong. So those are mine. And then Bob? <laughs> well, I do a lot of maintenance in the parking lot at truck stops. And I tell you, truck stop parking lots are pretty nasty <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Unless there's been a good rainstorm, then you're probably okay all right thank you um at this moment do we have any questions anybody any questions yes i want to talk about the good old days they weren't that good the, the trucks rode rough but the one thing i remember from when i started and i hear about camaraderie all the time there's no camaraderie left in our industry anymore no it's just not needed as much as it used to be if it's a truck right breaks here. down now you're connected it's right here Right, but no, but right I'm here. saying out in the field. It used to be if your truck broke down, three people stopped to help you. But you're not alone anymore. You're connected by cell phone, Qualcomm. Every time it's needed, I still see it come. But to me, the biggest th change that I've seen in the industry since I started, the old timers in my industry really didn't care if you wanted to hear about it or not. If you were doing it wrong, they told you. They stopped you. They did not wait till you ran into something. They stopped you. Now they sit in their cab doing their next TikTok video watching you screw up. What's up with that? Get out of the truck, put your phone down, stop the person. That to me is the biggest change. The old timers are not made up like they used to be when I started. And I still remember there was an old timer. He was shorter than me, but his legs his arms were as big as my legs were around, and he called me down to talk to him at the island when we were unplugging the trucks. And oh yeah, for the young people now, if you didn't have your trucks plugged in back then, they didn't start. It was a wonderful time. But anyway, he called me down to him, and because his arms were as big around as my legs, I thought it was a good idea to listen to him. And he walked down and he said to me, you're following too close. Of course, I was a young 20-something year old. I'm thinking, I don't even run with you. What do you know? I didn't say that because his arms were as big around as my legs were. And he says, look at the front of my truck. It's got almost 800,000 miles or whatever, and there's hardly any chips. And he grabbed me by the arm and drug me down to the cab over I was driving. He says, you got too many chips on your front end. You're following too close. I never forgot that. 
Will the old timers do that today? No, they're too busy getting the next FaceTime video to laugh at whoever messed up driving for one of the carriers that might be called a training carrier. Over. We won't name them. Uh, all right, uh, Linda's going to wrap up. If we have any questions, first, so any questions in the audience? Don't be shy, don't be shy. All right, Linda, you want to do a little wrap up here and then we'll uh, finalize it with everybody? Well, I was thinking each one of us could do a, a small little something. So you guys be prepared for a wrap up on, on, on why our group is so awesome and how it can help somebody else. So, you know, to stay together for 14 years takes a lot of work. And we have almost came to the point, really a, a couple times, of not continuing on. But it was just the grit to get through a problem and, and move. In every time we meet, it, it reminds us of how much we care about each other. And I know at this show, some of these guys have just met for the very first times. They've they've talked on the phones sometimes daily, hours daily. But it's the first time they've ever met, and it. It just always reminds me, you know, you sit with these people of how they have bettered our lives and bettered our business. Over. I really don't have anything to say, add to that, so I'll just go over. I, as a wrap up, I have to say um, thank you for coming to Matt's. It was all a sacrifice for all of us to come to Matt's. You had to take time out of making money. Think about that for a second stop making money to go learn about something. So I hope you have a great takeaway from this. Um, and I challenge you to make more money when you go back after mats. The benefit from the group is that, again, it's that torque multiplier. So I hope you reach out to others and ask them how they're benefiting from this. Over. I think the biggest thing I've come to learn from being part of this group is it has allowed me to learn more about product. One, for instance, was my truck. Uh, it's allowed me to improve my business practices. It's allowed me to learn how to be a, make that better first image with my customers. Um, it's allowed me to build friendships and relationships with not only these individuals, but some of the vendors or guest speakers that we've had on our calls uh, to build some relationships with those individuals. Um, other than that, I think that's really about all I've got at this point. Over. Oh, the biggest benefit of the group for me was uh, coming into the new technology truck. I had a pre-emissions truck, didn't want to go with emissions, and I finally bit the bullet and bought a brand new truck and helped get an inspect out and get over the nervousness of the uh, emissions. And, camaraderie, the fun we have, the joking, the witty banner. It's, uh, it's all really great stuff and really looks forward to it every week for our call. The benefit for me <clears throat> is learning about Bob and Linda expediting, uh, Stephen and Sandy expediting. I didn't know nothing about that. So that, that opened my eyes up to a whole new world of different stuff that's out there. And Henry, for me, allowing you you gave up your truck to me, so I have to say thank you for that. I really appreciate, you know, that. So Henry wanted to order a six by two and liftable in 2018, and I was the one to get it. So he taught me a lot, and thank you, Henry. Over. You're welcome, Randy. <laughs> and, and Randy's an example. I mean, I'll never forget when I met him in person up at Lancaster, and this is the kind of give and take. This is before you were part of the group. And we were talking about aerodynamics and fuel mileage, and I was up at the Make-A-Wish convoy up there. And, and you're like, but I'm a bull caller. I'm like, you're basically the same shape as me. So you ended up doing the whole nine yards to a walking floor. He's side skirted and everything else. But the numbers he was able to turn was simply impressive. You know, and just adopted many things. I remember the Gauches, before you were even driving as a truck, for how many years did we end up meeting at the Expedite Expo and talking about what it's like to drive and everything else? And they really did their homework before they got their own truck. And because of that, you've been, and I'll let you have it. Over. Over. Uh, what I've taken away from this group, having worked for the federal government for so many years, 
they like yes people. And here you don't have to be a yes person. You can disagree and still be friends. In the federal government, not anymore. Over. Well, I have probably gleaned so much business because we started in 2012. We joined the group in 2017. Um, yeah, we were making it, but we also had two incomes at the time. And join this group, what they have helped us doing business-wise, uh, how to do business, how to get fuel, where to get fuel, fuel discounts, the list goes on and on and on. The bottom line has gotten much bigger for us with this group than if we tried to figure it all out on our own. Each and every one of these, except for the person, my better half sitting next to me, thank you, uh, has taught me more than I probably could ever learn on my own. Um, I can't thank each and every one of them enough. There's some of the individuals that you saw roll through that are not here, they could not make it. Same with them. And what I really enjoy is out of this group, you kind of know their expertise. And if you have a question, a problem, you pick up the phone. They may not answer the phone, but you can leave them a voicemail or they'll see you missed a call. They could be unloading, loading. It could be three o'clock in the morning. They'll return your call as soon as they can. And you can ask the question and they may not know the answer, but one of these individuals here will know somebody that will know the answer or the solution. That's what I like about it. They, in this group, you can always find a solution, whether even it's outside of the solution. The other thing I really like is the guest speakers. It's, as you saw, the real long list of guest speakers, that was kind of a partial list. That didn't actually go all the way back to the beginning of time of the guest speakers. They give so much more to when they have a group than an individual. Like if you go into a booth and you talk here, if you would walk in with 30 people, just think how much information you could get and the questions that you would get from those 30 people going back to that individual that you're asking the questions of and having them speak to you. Um, tires, oil, like someone mentioned. I've learned so much more about oil than I ever knew. I thought oil was basically, okay, you open up the can and you put it in, right? You get the, the right viscosity that you want. So to these guys, every one of them and gals, thank you for making us successful. Over. Thank you very much. And I think successful is what this group is all about. So thank you all for being here today. They will be around a little bit. If you have any questions, you want to talk to them individually, please do so. Um, any last minute questions? Now's your chance. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming by today. Enjoy the rest of your time at Matt's. It's great to be back here after the pandemic and, and, and seeing everybody again. It's wonderful. So thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you.